record this so that um, I can share it if needed. So we're going to have this month of drawing figures. Uh, we're starting with standing figures today. And we're going to include the food element, which is why I'm showing this beautiful Romare Bearden uh, collage of of uh, someone in the garden and her basket of things that she's picked and what a beautiful little collage this is. And uh, and so I have a lot of different examples to try and you know get us started. Um, we all love this. So standing figure with some food. And that's the theme for today, standing figure with some food. And you're going to have a chance to work from some famous pieces. Uh, It'll be uh, a little bit on the comic side, perhaps, but I think that could be a lot of fun and it'll just kind of get us going here. So if you have a piece of fruit around, you might want to draw from observation with your figure. Um, if not, um, like in the Romare Bearden, you know, when we we certainly are so familiar with what our fruits and vegetables look like that it's okay to to go in um, with your imagination, if it's ever so slightly abstracted, if it's um, if it's stylized, if an orange just becomes a round orange circle that you know it'll be able to be read. So we're not going to worry too much about that kind of thing, but hopefully we'll have a little bit of fun with this. Okay, so the reason I'm recording this now is uh, because it's kicking off this big event. And I all of these slides get shared with you and it, it's sent out in the email from Margie. So it's coming from, I believe it's coming to you from info at rssny.org. So if you look for that every week, you'll always have this link. And, uh, and it clearly says on there, link to images that April will use this month. So we keep that same link for the whole month. And I keep adding slides. But because of the wonder of Google Docs, when I add slides, you'll still you'll be able to see any changes I make to this slide presentation. So I'm just going to keep adding slides at the end, adding slides till we have our month of slides that you can always go back to work from or whatever. In here, I've also included our December slides. In case you were super busy during the holiday season and didn't make it, you can see our slides. And then last week's Boston Fern demo was okay. So I put that in there. Um, and so you can just click on that. So look, see, I'm, if I just click on it, it should, uh, it should open. Yes. Okay. So there it is. And then here's, so it'll look like this for you. It's an hour long. It was, it's too long of a demo, but anyway, I'm not going to let it uh, open there. Okay. So today is standing figures and food. Um, next week, seated figures and food, like people at a table. Then I thought we'd have some fun with dancing figures with food. And then getting our work, like putting finishing touches on for publishing so that when Tabitha sees you a week later, um, which I guess is February 1st, but Emma, I, my phone is tied up here because I'm using it as a document camera. Would you confirm that February 1st is a Thursday? Um, that's when Tabitha will be here in our class. And, and having gotten our pieces ready for publishing, she'll give you tips on photographing it, attaching it to an email in case you need help with that. Um, just kind of, you know, that sort of thing. And then you... Um, but on January 16th, if you want to come to the center, she'll work with you directly. But by January 16th, you won't have finished everything, but you could still learn ahead of time, right? So, uh, and Tabitha is always available for us. So she's, she's super great. So this is, you know, the, what we're, what we're doing this um, month. Yes, and we're going to Thursday, Thursday. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we got that right. Um, and so we'll be looking at famous pieces 
that include food because there's a ton of it. Artists somehow love to paint food. And so we can use that as inspiration. I always love this next one so much, this Frida Kahlo, um, you know, Viva La Vida. Yeah, she's, she was just so full of life, long live life itself. And look at these beautiful watermelons. So it doesn't, whatever you submit does not have to have food in it. I mean, what am I saying? Does not have to have figures in it. It, it can be just food and still life. And since we don't have to submit until March, Maybe we'll do one class in February on on drawing some food from observation. Uh, let's let's see how it goes. But I do want you to get figure practice. So that's yeah, I really wanted to do figures in January. Okay. Uh, standing figures and food. Uh, so we have this wonderful famous piece and uh, that you know is familiar and fun. Here's an example of, just food and without a figure. Also by Magritte, uh, the listening room. You know, the surrealists didn't always, they, you know, they wanted to throw us off with the title. You know, what, what does this mean? You know, so often it was just to completely have something absurd, almost like the absurdity that you, that you encounter in your dreams. Uh, here's a close-up of that Magritte, because I thought if this captivates you, you could do a self-portrait from a photograph with a piece of food in front of you. Maybe you want to change it to an ice cream cone. We did desserts and ice cream not too long ago. I think it was in the summer, and we got some great drawings out of it. You could also try and pull some of those out if you were happy with those and submit those. Um, and, or you could do a portrait of someone in your family um, or one of your parents or whatever with, you know, whatever, whatever food they liked in front of them. And then I've um, been hearing a lot about, you know, Oscars and, you know, it's coming up. Um, and I thought, well, okay, what if Oscar was holding some food? This might be a very fun standing figure to work from because it's not super defined. It just kind of gives us this stance and uh, and he's got his hands together. So it's like, okay, what could he be holding? Is he holding a stalk of celery? What is it that he's holding? And you can just add that. So that's one option today. We're gonna do a couple of exercises, which is what I like to do when we do figures. Or maybe you wanna do the Statue of Liberty and what is she holding up, you know? Do you wanna turn that into something else? Do you wanna turn the flame into something else as kind of some New York humor for our cookbook? And so she would be fun to draw. And, uh, and when you do start to draw, I wanna make some recommendations. We're gonna do a little exercise very soon, but uh, just to give you an idea how to start, I'm going to be using, well, I'll, we'll get to that in a minute. Okay, so how do you start on something like this? You see this, and then it's a standing figure. And we learned somewhere along the way that uh, a certain number of heads will make the figure, okay? So if this is the side of the head, okay, in this case, because, you know, there can be some variations, I'm sort of approximating here. Oops, not that one. Wait, hang on. Approximating, approximating. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six and a half heads high in this case. And then of course he's on a stand, which makes him look even taller. He's very lean, which also makes him look taller. So uh, sometimes there are eight, heads high, sometimes they're 10 heads high, if you want super elongated. Um, so one thing to think about is, you know, head size. And when you start drawing, um, you are maybe looking at the photograph and then you might wanna start with the head and then you, you can just kind of do kind of a dancing figure just to get sort of the main 
the main feeling of the figure. And then that's like, that's your sketch. That's all you have to start with, something like that. I kind of like this kind of dancing line where you, you don't lift up the pencil necessarily. You can always go back and, you know, add, add more, but, you know, whatever it is he's holding. And then, you know, uh, we can um, just uh, put something else in his hand if you want. <laughs> he's holding a beat with beat tops. And then I would paint that red. Let's see, let's make it red. All right, so I don't have the right red for beats, but you get the idea. Excuse me. I thought we had a little bit of fun with that. Let's see what else I have for you here. So, um, so you might want to pick one of these three. And uh, if you have something else, if you have a photograph of someone in your family who's standing and the photograph happens to be nearby, feel free to work from that. You don't have to do head to toe unless you want to. I went ahead and zoomed in here so that um, you could see the pictures more clearly, but you know, you might want to do, you know, the entire figure, but you have these slides to work from if you want, but I'm going to leave this slide it, on. Excuse me. Could, Hi, you do, could you put up the Romar beard in one? <laughs> oh, um, wasn't planning on that, but did you get the slides? Cause you can, you can pull it up and you can work from that one too. I'm uh -huh. not sure I can get her oh, in okay. here. You know okay. what? I will, for you, I'm going to try. Uh -huh. Let's see if I can um, get a oh, little okay. bit of her in there. Yeah. Let's see. I uh, might not be the only one who wants it. Isn't it a wonderful, it's just Sorry. such a wonderful piece. I'll just yeah. move her over. I'll move him over. I'll move him over. And let's see where we can fit her. Oh, thank you. Uh-huh. So yeah. I'm going to, she's a lovely standing figure. Okay. Oops, wait, hang on. I don't want to squeeze her in a weird way. Oh. All right, let me let me try the other way first. I got a picture. <laughs> oh, okay. That's good. That'll that will yeah. help you. Okay. But it's a good okay. idea because it's a wonderful, it's a yeah. wonderful standing figure. It's just wonderful. Yeah. And I think I can fit her right up there. Great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for the suggestion. All right. So, all right. I think that'll work. Okay. So I'm going to, see. So we've got four different, I, you know, you don't have to do them all, of course. Um, focus on one. and. I, oh, right before we do, let me just make a little recommendation. Make a little recommendation on materials. Let's talk about that for a second. Okay, so I've got my, hello? There we go. Okay, so I've got, well, I like to work on watercolor paper no matter what. Okay. Even for drawing, because, you know, we might be adding water to it. All right. So I never leave the paper in the tablet. I always tear it out because if it gets really wet, it might get the paper underneath wet. Okay, so I have a shadow coming in, which reminds me. Remember last week we were talking about tracing shadows? It's a great shadow that uh, could be used for something. What I've gotten out here for us is four different kinds of water soluble pencil. And uh, because I thought it would be fun to use that for this drawing. So for instance, uh, here's the one from Ikea. It, it's a blue one. And if I'm doing my standing figure here, let me move this up further. All right, so I'm gonna compare that with a sketch and wash pen. So I'm gonna just, Okay, I'm gonna put Ikea here. I like, you know, I like the blue. So that's always nice. Sketch and wash, okay. Sketch and wash. 
Um, I'm going to try. I, I should look at the Romar Bearden before I do this. He looks something like that. And it's just my quickie start of the sketch. Was she wearing like a little apron maybe? I'm not sure. Okay, and we'll see what that does when I add water. And then I'm going to do two more. So I'm going to do, um, this is by Derwent, and it's called Lightwash HB. And um, I think for this one, I'm just going to put it down and not make a figure, just so in the interest of time. So I'm going to call it uh, Lightwash, because I know the next one I'm going to use. I'm not 100% sure about this one, but this one's fabulous. This is also by Derwent. It's an ink tense pencil and it's the color Chinese ink. And this is just such a fabulous, fabulous. I'll go back to, to Oscar here because he's so easy to draw. I made Oscar a little hippie there. Okay, so this one is the, uh, it's, they call it Chinese ink as the color. Okay, so once you have sort of your sketch on there, you might, since it's a watercolor class, you might want to add, I'm just using any brush that is near me. And then I kind of know what the, okay, the kind of luck that the was a little, had a little bit of blue on it. It kind of added to the blue. Let me wash it a little better. Okay. So I know that, that these, um, these Ikea, so here's Ikea. I know that the Ikea melts beautifully. And look, I can even erase some parts out if I, if I wanted to. And I can also go back while it's wet and I can still draw into it and it's very forgiving. So love this pencil. We we, you know, we always love this. All right. Mess up the face there. So I just kind of paint it out. Okay. Rinse off the brush. Sketch and wash. Um, a brand pencil that yes, it melts. See the gray that I'm getting out of it. It doesn't completely disappear which is why it's not my favorite it's okay and if you know sometimes this is the look that you want just you know this kind of light wash now this one called light wash is sort of, is pretty much the same but i can unlike the ikea well if i keep working it i am getting it to diminish somewhat there that's pretty good let's see if this one diminishes very hard to erase. I think I did remove some there. Okay, so these are sort of on par. This one I think is just beautiful because it just goes super dark and lovely, rich color. And um, so, so I recommend that you use something that's water soluble. And I know a lot of you have that stick that, um, let's see, this uh, Lyra graphite stick, which is, you know, a beautiful, but very, you know, intense melting, because it's, it's also such a big chunk of it. So there's a lot, a lot, a lot of gra water soil graphite on there. Okay. So that's what I recommend using for this little thing. And I'm gonna set the timer for 10 minutes and uh, just give you a chance to draw as many as you want. Um, you might work on just one and add wash. You don't have to work as quickly as I do. You can take your time. And I'm just gonna set it for 10 minutes. And I'm going to even uh, mute myself. And then uh, when my alarm goes off, I'll unmute.
Are you going to reshow that sample with the four picture with the four things? Yes, thank you, Linda. See, I see it on my screen. Thank you for reminding me that you don't see it. All right, here we go. Thank you. Yes, that was that was the idea. <laughs> thank you, Linda. I'm going to stop the recording now. Okay, so I'm going to have Barbara tell us again about the cookbook project. Now okay. that yeah go ahead yeah so um we are doing we have the rss cooking club we've been doing um not just the cooking but other things along with food um including art so we want to create this cookbook that is going to be a fundraiser that is going to come out at the 50th anniversary of um rss's uh in, in september and we're going to use it to, like I said, to fundraise, but we want to incorporate not just recipes, but artwork that's food related. We want uh, photos, recipes, along with a little story as to what you love about this food, why you pick that recipe. Maybe it's a little poetry that's food related, um, a memoir, something that we can incorporate. So we're trying to just encompass everything we've been doing. Um January 16th, we're having a Celebrate Food at RSS Day, and part of that is going to be the official launch of this project. So one of the things that we want is artwork that's food inspired from you guys. Um, can't guarantee that every single one of them is going to get in the book, but we would like all the submissions. Um, at one o'clock, Tabitha Rosa, our tech person, is going to do a workshop on how to scan artwork um, and send it to, in the email. So if you're interested, she's going to be there in person. Um, in the meantime, I just emailed her to confirm that she can be with you guys on February 1st at 2.30 when April is not here. So she can also do it online. Um, and then you can always get in touch with her if you need some help figuring how to do that, because there is a little bit of a technique to get your artwork photographed so that it looks right, um, so that the lighting is what you want it to be. Um, and I think that pretty much covers everything. Did I forget something? Do you want something? to show us your slides? Do you want to show us yes, your slides? Yes, yes, thank you. Okay. I went to a lot of uh -huh. trouble with these slides. So we want to- I know, <laughs> yeah. So right now, this is kind of the idea that right now the title and thing is Culinary Tapestry, Weaving Recipes, Stories, Poetry, and Art. Um, everything is food submitted. Like I said, the artwork must be scanned and sent to me electronically. Um, but we will teach you, if you need help, how to do that. And um, the deadline is going to be, excuse me, Sunday, March 31st. Apparently, I have the wrong day, but the right date. Um, and you can send everything to me at food at rssny.org. Um, and then also I'm going to create a, a, like a sign-in form that if anybody's interested, they can let me know and I can always get back in touch with you. Um, but I don't have that right now. Barbara, what else is happening on January 16th besides Tabitha's presentation? Um, we're going to have, a, let's see, a bake sale. We're going to have um, a couple of few things that are hybrid. So we're going to have some TED Talks that are, we're going to show some TED Talks that are talking about food, um, Chinese food in America, the next best thing coming out of the Bronx, cul some culinary uh, foods that are coming out of the Bronx. Um, we are going to have a poetry and a food poetry and stories jam where we're going to add, we've invited people to read stories and poetry and essays um, about food. And if you think you're interested, let me know because I would like to set sort of a, a little bit of a schedule so I know when that's going to be. That's at 11. Um, then at one, we have the, the thing with Tabitha. Uh, we're also going to be doing a blind food taste testing. Um, we're going to, Tamnika is going to do a demonstration on how to decorate cupcakes. She apparently used to have a, a side business on de cupcakes. So she's going to show us how to do decorating. And then we're going to have some bingo and right. uh, a couple okay. prizes. So it should be fun. What day of the week 
<laughs> that's Tuesday. That's uh, on Tuesday. And, it's a Tuesday, um, January yeah. 16th. So okay, here, starting... I'll put in that starting, yeah, starting at nine o'clock until four. Um, right. If you want to join some some of those things online while you're talking, I'll put the uh, registration uh, link in the chat so you can register for it if you're not able to to oh, be here yeah. in person. Yeah. Okay. Great. Any questions out there? So the tech talk would be part of the hybrid. That is, I think that's going to be in person only. She usually, what she does with her tech talks is either she has it in person and then she'll repeat the same thing online. So I'll ask her if she's doing it online, okay. but she will be doing it for your class um, one day specifically to, to show you how to do it. Okay, They're great. First, yeah. Okay. 2,000 miles away, that day. <laughs> Yes, exactly. So uh, <laughs> coming in is not a possibility. I also have a question. Sorry. Um, when you send the email, are you going to send a schedule for the day? Um, in the email, it'll have, you know, a little thing about the day and it'll have the schedule on there. Okay, great. Thank and you. And then it's one link. Um, the same Zoom will be for all of the hybrid classes. So once you get that, you don't have to go to a bunch of different things. Just stay on or come back on on the same link. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you, Barbara. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Okay. All right. So continuing on, once you have a wall, you have a few more options. Once you have a, a sketch, I should say. Um, we have a few more options. The the Romare Bearden lady had a really cute hat. So let's see if I can draw that on her with a pen that I know will not melt when I put watercolor on top. And I can start to, you know, maybe do a little bit of defining in the face and uh, give her earrings if I want. Whatever it is that um, little details. I I don't know if she has an apron, but I'm gonna put an apron on her since we're you know talking about food. And she's reaching up for something, but now it looks like she's reaching for her hat, but that's okay too. And then once I get a little bit of you know, def definition here on her. I can start to add watercolor. So I can, for instance, and then I want to see what you came up with, with what food you're going to have. So if I kind of remember like a check dress. So if I wanted to start painting checks, I could draw it first, but other other than I think I can maybe um, get it going without drawing it first and add my watercolor as I go. And I would just, you know, keep going with that sort of thing. My check's happening here. So I just put the uh, link for the registration in the chat for everybody. Oh, great. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you so much. So then watercolor, I think I'll give her a little red shoes. Uh, watercolor is, you know, can go on top of these washes very nicely. And I'm not, I, I'm, I used my sketch to sort of get everything started. And then I defined it with some black pen because that shows up really well in reproducing. We need like, we have to make sure we have enough contrast for reproducing. So, uh, and then if I'm going to do that beat for Oscar, uh, here's the beat, the beat root. And then I would, you know, start adding the leaves of the beat and all of that sort of thing. But, but I want to see what some of you do. So I'm just going to stop the recording. If I can figure that out. Uh, let's see. Okay, to uh, get the recording back going again. And I loved your drawings. I loved all your different takes on, on what's going on here uh, with different things. Okay, so Apollo Belvedere, you know, it's like, okay, what he was, he was uh, 
uh, they believe he it was a uh, bow and arrow that and that he had just shot the bow and arrow. But the way his hand is, you can work from just the hand. You can do the whole figure. It's really good practice. And then, you know, what is he gazing at? You know, is he gazing at a bunch of broccoli? Um, so with color, <laughs> with that little bit of color, you can really, you know, make this comical. Um, in this one, uh, Hermes was, was most likely dangling grapes to try and... Uh, apparently the infant Dionysus was very naughty and always was playing tricks, even as a tiny baby. And so here's Hermes, who was charged with watching him for a little while in the story. And, uh, and he has to, um, he has to uh, entertain him. And since little baby Dionysus there is, is the god of wine and he'll grow up and all that uh dangling grapes in front of him so and then supposedly you know uh, the arms always break off yeah but it's um how it goes in greek art okay so then i found one where it's another roman copy or a different roman copy um and uh and we can see the grapes and we can see the arm so i'm not sure who I think it's it's just another Roman copy of the original. So uh, if that's of interest for figure drawing. Um, and then here they are again. But I thought we'd move on to the ones that um, that Ellen was talking about too. I thought we'd work on this one next to get a back view of someone. And I want you to think about someone in particular and maybe the colors that he or she wore. And was she heavier than this? Was she thinner than this? Make this, so, draw this with someone that you know in mind and, uh, or make them up of course, and then change the stuff in the kitchen. We've got a nice layout there of you know, where the shelves could go or where the counter could go. This could be a very modern kitchen. You can turn this into any kind of kitchen, but I think it's a good exercise to draw a figure from the back preparing food. And so the position of the elbows and just because there are food items around and pots and pans that it looks like. So I thought we'd spend, um, let's go for five minutes um, working on this one. And, uh, and let's start now. I'm gonna mute myself. I'm gonna go get some more water.
Okay, so another one that we can work on. Um, I thought these were both beautiful and you can, you know, put whomever you know that uh, you can, you know, change up anything, change up the hair, change up the clothing. And then here's the one that Ellen just worked from, which is a lot of fun. And <laughs> Ellen, Ellen, I think, changed it uh, well enough. This one's fabulous. You know, clearly people working in the kitchen and doing something with food. So let's try a side view this time. And again, uh, put clothing on it, uh, maybe someone, maybe a piece of clothing that you have, maybe change the hair a little bit, borrow what you want to. And again, you can do a more modern kitchen. You can do, um, uh, let me, speaking of modern kitchen, let me just, I wasn't going to show this today, but I it's just so fabulous. Have you been to Louis Armstrong's house in Queens? Well, I, it's a great tour. It's a great place to go. And look at her kitchen. His wife's kitchen was like this beautiful blue, like for the time period, super, super modern. And I see, I still have um, Amy highlighted. So let me change that. Uh, okay. Um, and here's another view of it. And look, the mixer was built right into the cabinet. It's like very, very cool. So it looks modern and retro all at the same time. Look at this. And look at the curved edges. It was just, you know, top of the line at the time. And I guess she just loved this beautiful, beautiful blue. Even the dishwasher has that on it. Just, I just love this kitchen. So, um, so you can do any any background on any of these and make it personal. So we're, we're trying this, um, this side view. Let's see if that one or that one, either one works. So you pick the one you want. I'm gonna put the black and white one on because I think it's super easy to see, but maybe on your own, uh, you might want to work with a different, a slightly different position with the arms. So let's do this one now for five minutes. And then you have both to work on. So let's go for seven minutes. So you have time to like get the sort of a profile 